Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to the virtual edition of Film Independent Presents. Uh, my name is Brian Sheehan. I am the Senior Manager of Industry Relations here at Film Independent to welcome you. Uh, first, I'd like to thank our Film Independent Presents lead sponsor, the Hollywood Foreign Press Association. The HFPA has been an ardent supporter of this program for many, many years, and we're so thankful for their support, especially right now during this trying time. And thanks to our virtual screenings partner, Vision Media. Uh, make sure you check out the Film Independent Presents webpage to see our screenings and Q&As we have coming up. Today's Q&A has been specially curated for our Art Circle and Film Lover members. And uh, what your support makes what we do every single day at Film Independent possible. So thank you for joining us and you are so very much appreciated. Uh, so without further ado, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce our guest this afternoon from Hulu's newest documentary, We Are Freestyle Love Supreme. We have multi-Emmy-nominated producer and director, uh, Andrew Freed, uh, who has brought the world such hits as Chef's Table and Sheer, and now We Are Freestyle Love Supreme. Decorated across theater and television, producer and Freestyle Love Supreme collaborator, Thomas Tommy Kale, uh, who we all know from a dark horse indie hit called Hamilton, uh, now on Disney+. Plus as well as the celebrated Fosse Verdon on uh, FX. And we're also joined by two members of Freestyle Love Supreme, Tony winner James Monroe Eigelhart, who recreated the role of the genie in Broadway's Aladdin, and stepped into the shoes of Lafayette and Thomas Jefferson in Hamilton, and Chris Jackson, who originated the roles of Benny in In the Heights, and George Washington in Hamilton, and was nominated for a Tony for it and your kids will recognize his voice from Moana. Thank you so much for joining us, guys. I know you're all very busy. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. Uh, I, guess, I guess we'll start where, um, uh, I know Andrew, you, you know, were filming this way back in the early 2000s, um, but where did it start to kind of like, hey, let's revisit this and you know, piece it together as, as something new to like revisit the old footage and also, um, you know, take uh, take a moment to to look at where Freestyle of Supreme was at now. Yeah, uh, again, thank you so much for having us and for giving us an opportunity to talk about our our film here, um, and just for giving me a, another chance to catch up with with these guys. Um, yeah, it's uh, you know I had been filming Freestyle of Supreme and filming with Tommy and Lynn and Chris and Bill. Um, around in the Heights. Um, and so there was a lot of footage. There was a lot of, you know, I knew that I had a box of tapes of old footage of these guys with, you know, funny hairstyles, rapping in the streets of Edinburgh and rapping in the streets of New York, like trying to get people to come to their improv show. Um, but it never was this documentary necessarily. It never, you know, I, I sort of always assumed that somebody would find me, a documentarian, a, a journalist, somebody would be like, are you the guys with the old, are you the guy with the old tapes of these guys from Scotland? And, and so, you know, I held on to my tapes and I held on to my hard drive. I now have the tapes on my desk here. So, um, but uh, it was in November of 2018, I was with Tommy Kale in New York and we had had this running joke after I had stopped filming them in earnest, where any event that was happening, I would get a text or I would get something where, you know, Chris would reach out and be like, are we rolling on this? Um, you know, I, I think Bill said it to me at his wedding, like, are we rolling on this? Um, and so- It didn't happen if you weren't rolling in. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. It didn't happen if, uh, right. if, if, I, if I wasn't rolling on it, it didn't happen. And so we were out to lunch in November. Tommy started telling me that the original group was getting back together to do a run downtown for about a month. And I think I half expected some variation of that joke, right? Are, are, are we rolling on this? But instead, Tommy very simply um, looked at me and said, should we finish our movie? Um, and that's when it became a movie. And so I think very quickly, Tommy and I had a pretty good idea of what we had, what the story was that we could tell and how we could tell it through the filter of everybody getting back together in 2019, their lives having gone in many different directions. And now that group sort of coming together again to be on stage together and listen and improvise and, and what that all means for them. 
but that's when it became a movie and that's when we started talking about what it actually could be. And, and what was that kind of like, kind of digging through, I mean, your, uh, you know, your, your career has gone in an amazing direction and that kind of, and you're a very different filmmaker now than you were then. So it was kind of like revisiting that footage. It was really the first time, you know, that, that, that original stuff from Edinburgh, though I had pretended to be a very seasoned filmmaker uh, and producer when I convinced these guys to let me film with them, but it really was like the first time I had grabbed a camera and pretended to know what I was doing. Um, and so looking at some of that footage is humbling, um, but I also, it's, it's a, it was a scrapbook for us. And that's ultimately what we decided to try to do with the film, right? Going through that footage did feel just like this raw emotional experience of looking back at the beginning of something. And it was the beginning of something. It was the beginning of, of a lot of things, but some of it being quite extraordinary that a lot of people were quite interested in. But what I think quickly emerged for Tommy and me and Serena, who's, uh, the other producer of the film um, was that it's a story about friendship over time. Yes, it is about creativity. It is about collaboration. It is about origin stories. It's, you know, in some ways it's a superhero origin story to see like where they all came from. It's a prequel. It's, you know, there's a lot of things to it that I think make it interesting. But for me personally, and I think Tommy would agree, it's a, it's a story about friendship over time and how relationships have to evolve and grow and cannot be exactly how they started, but they can grow into something very different and rewarding and satisfying and loving in a different way. And so I think that was a life lesson that was valuable to me through the telling of this story um, and an emotional journey that was very rewarding for me to go on as a storyteller. Well, well you definitely succeeded. I mean, that's the, both, both of those come Thank across you. in terms of like, the, the journey as artists, but also the journey as friends, um, and, and what what those things, um, you know, how those things shape and morph as things go on, um, and 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 definitely in terms of the artist position, where it, you know you're kind of looking at, um, you know, you've all had these major hits, um, so we're we're kind of looking at it, it's like, well that they're hit makers, but like this was at a time when it was like at the very beginning, the very, the very start of it. And uh, it kind of really beautifully captures that, that young scrappy energy. And then, um, you know, and even that, even in the current um, iteration of, of We Are, what we are Freestyle Love Supreme is the, like the, even that journey from off Broadway to Broadway and seeing that same excitement and energy um, in terms of that journey is, is really beautiful. I mean, what I would, what I would highlight though is this group was never like, oh, shucks, wide eyed, like, God, I hope I get it. Like it was it, that, that they, they didn't know where they were going, but I think they knew they were going somewhere. And, and that was part of looking at this footage 14 years later when we started the edit and seeing the confidence of Lynn and Chris and Tommy and Bill and Arthur and Shock, like in their, in their interviews and Anthony certainly, but like going back to those interviews they weren't just excited to be there. You know, they, they were doing something and they were trying to hone in on something. They were perfecting something or they at the very least were trying to get something better than it was the night before. And there was a confidence that as someone who observed them for a while through FLS and then through Heights later, it's something that I took with me and, and part of my identity and part of what I attribute whatever success I've had to of you know, no, we're not lucky to be here. We belong here. And you look to your left and you look to your right and this is where we belong. And what are we going to do now? Now that we're on this step, what's the next step that we're going to take? And what are we going to use this success to, you know, as a foundation for something else? And that's from just being able to observe these guys as they've gone about their creative and professional lives. And uh, Tommy, you're also a, a producer and a director. Um, so if you could talk a little bit about your working relationship with Andrew. Um, uh, I mean, you, you actually even make a comment during the doc about like, you were filming us during this time and you asked me to do, you know, with the reviews moment. Um, oh yes, I, re oh, I remember. Like you call him out, which, oh, which kind of like broke the fourth wall of document, which is kind of like in a way that 
was I mean, kind look, of incredible to me. I'm a, I'm a gifted subject. I knew what I was doing. <laughs> <laughs> You're breaking the third, fourth wall in theater and now in documentary. And yes. <laughs> Smashing it. I'm destroying it. Um, so if you could talk about your work, your working relationship there. Um, well, you know, I, producing and directing have so much in common. Uh, for me, you know, producing is do all the things you need to do so you can get to rehearsal. And then once you get in rehearsal, you can, you can do your work as a director. And of course, do, the work that you do as a director exists so far outside of the rehearsal, just in terms of the, you know, what you need to walk in. And so it's hard for me to separate those things. And it's interesting, right, in, in a lot of more recent films, it's so much more common for a director to also be credited as a producer now, whereas for decades, they, you know, directors weren't getting that credit, um, literally or otherwise, and yet we're certainly producing it, right? Producing is to make it happen. So, you know, the thing I, I mean, I feel very comfortable producing. I feel very comfortable directing. Like, I don't, like, I'm fine to talk to people in, in front of a camera. It's not my favorite thing. <laughs> um, you know, there's a, there's a story that Lynn and I tell, like the difference between me and Lynn were to crystallize it. When we were downtown off Broadway with, uh, with Hamilton, there was like a, a small lottery. It's like a hundred people would come and they would, maybe 150 people, and they would have like a bingo thing. Like, and they'd be like, you won the lottery. And there were 10 tickets and only 290 seats. So it was, it was really vibrating down there. And Lynn and I, we were in preview still. We would go to dinner together and then we'd come back to the show and we would walk into the lobby of the public. And right in the center was like this mass of people. And I would go all the way around them to the stage door and Lynn would walk right through them and be like, good luck, good luck, everybody. Good luck, everyone, good luck, oh my God. And they'd like cheer him and like pick him up and put him down. And we would get to the door at the same time. He's like, I know I have a problem. Um, and, I, and I said to him, I was like, you just in one minute <laughs> created the, the, vision, the, the visual for the difference between me and you. Um, so <laughs> being in front of the camera makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable um, in that I'm very aware when you're making something that melts every night and disappears, what it means to carve it and have it be the story of. This becomes the story of mm. by it being documented. And Andrew and I got to know each other during those, you know, those days in Edinburgh when, when I was there with him and then in the subsequent months. But Andrew spent 700 hours rolling on, uh, on heights. Now, I obviously wasn't there for all of it, but we spent months and months and months and months together. And then after that, made a lot of stuff together that we would produce together, that Andrew produced, that I would direct. So my faith in him is, is at the highest level. And it is, it is no different than the way that I feel about Chris or James or any of the, the folks in the group, is that we believe in each other. And Andrew had shown me in so many ways during the making, in particular of Heights, because when you put a camera in the room, everything changes. You put a camera in the room when there's not performers, it changes. You put a performers, it changes, right? Like there's a principle, right? Like, you know, and so as we're making our, you know, portrait of, a, of an artist as a young knucklehead or whatever it is that we were doing, you know, I kept on thinking of this, this idea of getting back together with this group was about celebrating them. And a lot of it was a question of like, why doesn't the world know Anthony? Why doesn't the world know Arthur? Why doesn't the world know Shockwave? More people should, more people should, more people should. And that creates complexity and nuance within the dynamic, but it also felt like it was worth documenting because we weren't planning on going to Broadway. We were planning on coming together for one more month. There's a, there's a six months later in our doc, but that was, not, that was not the intent. The intent was let's go and dust off the self-published poetry that we made before the two novels we wrote. And if you read the poetry, you'll realize, oh, that's the same language and structure and feel that are in the novels. And so it, it was a chance for us to re-engage with that. But, it felt as comfortable as it could because of my relationship with Andrew. So I give him tremendous credit uh, for editing me well. <laughs> I'll also not to not to interrupt or, or play director or producer, but this I will better, say that this better be nice about me. Your story it's, it's neutral, but the story <laughs> that you tell about Lynn in the lobby is also sort of in the film. When you're walking up to see the in the Heights billboard that first time, you're like, let's, and you're saying it to me. You're not even saying it to Lynn. You're like, let's walk somewhere so that we're not just staring at ourselves. And he's like, I don't really have a problem with it. <laughs> and like, and that's okay. Like that's, that's, that's our friend. <laughs> that's our friend and not thank, on this Zoom. So take that. Thank God. <laughs> exactly. And, thank God for and, uh, and I guess, Tommy, you actually brought up a point about um, like an actor being in front of the camera. So uh, Chris and James, you, you can really speak to this as like, 
as actors, but also subjects within this documentary and uh, that kind of, uh, you know, tug and pull of being in front of a camera, but you're, you're not being a character anymore. You're being yourself and, and what that experience is like with the, the camera on you, not as George Washington or the genie or, you know, Jefferson, but uh, as yourselves and what, what that is like. Mm. It's very strange because this group of guys will make a character out of you, even though you are walking in your own skin. <laughs> and by these guys, I don't mean Andrew per se or Tommy per se, although he's complicit. But this group of dudes is absolutely impossible to um, to be around without like all the parts of yourself coming out all within 15 minutes. Um, and that's every time that we're together. So that's the <laughs> that's the beauty of 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 you know trusting the people that have that are holding the cameras and more importantly uh that that control the buttons in the edit room in the edit bay um it can be you know you spend this much time with with each other you're gonna know each other you're gonna know all the good and all the bad and now the rest of the world knows a lot of those things too so it's a little tricky but um th there's never you know from the moment that we met andrew humility goes a long way and he just kind of came in very enthusiastic and very humble. Um, he could have been Scorsese as far as I was concerned. Like he was just a great dude. And, and that was, pr you know, proven uh, to be the case every single time that he was there. It was as if we had another family member in the room because we did have another family member in the room and he was doing his work and we were doing ours, but they worked really well together because it was, it, it was just such a, um, an intense level of trust. Um, that that you don't just sort of manufacture it just it's either there or it isn't and it was always there and you bring up an important point about the kind of the editing process is like you're as a theater actor like you know what you put it out on stage and like and here you're kind of trusting a whole other group of people to to put together you know what you've said in in, in possibly other ways um which is which is a whole other um <laughs> process it's only ever about the moment quite honestly, at least for, from my perspective, it's only ever about the moment, the questions that are asked, the answers you, you, you get. But as Tommy said, everything about Freestyle Supreme melts away at the end of every show, except our friendship and what we've learned that, that for that time about each other, what more we've learned, how many layers have been added to the levels of, of love and of trust and of, you know, uh, concern and of, <laughs> uh, of laughter, all of those things. Those are the things that stick with you, the interactions with the audience. Uh, but the words that come out of our mouths are just sort of like, you know, it's to meet that moment and then they're gone. It's smoke. You're not going to, you know, it dissipates. Uh, and, and it becomes very hard to kind of be, to, you cannot be self-conscious in these moments. The show will beat it out of you. Because if you try to like, you know, give a drop, a, 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 you know, a hot 16 about swimsuits, you know, if you try to be self-conscious while you're while you're conjuring up all of these uh, all of these words and thoughts and ideas, it, it becomes it becomes too much to hold on to. Um, yeah, but it is you know it is a responsibility that we take very seriously, both in the field but certainly in the edit room, to what Tommy and Chris are saying and what I'm sure James will echo if I let him get a word in is this idea of you know it exists in that room and it exists for the people who are there, and it's not intended to be preserved. That's not the art form of improv. Um, it's something I talk about all the time as I've worked with chefs through the years of like, you create something that exists for a minute and a half, it is consumed and then it's gone. Mm -hmm. I do something that is the exact opposite. I'm gonna spend some time with you, I'm gonna capture as much as I can, and then I'm gonna go in an edit room for a few months and come back and when, what I'm done, when I'm done, what I have will last forever. And that's a huge responsibility. These guys' grandchildren will watch this movie. Their great-grandchildren will watch this movie. And regardless of what was happening at that time, this is now that story. This is, you know, no different than Hamilton, right? I don't, I don't, I never read Chernow's book and I didn't know much about Hamilton before, but seeing, you know, Chris and Lynn and, and, and the entire cast of Hamilton on stage telling that story, that is now the story of Alexander Hamilton in my mind. And so this is the story of Tommy Kale. This is the story of, of Anthony Viniziali. This is the story of Freestyle Love Supreme. And so that's a big responsibility and one that I take very seriously and, and try to deal with in a delicate way, but it's real. 
I think one of the fun things about um, our group is that, yes, it's true. What happens on stage, uh, Anthony likes to say, is happening for the first time for the last time. But the moments that you catch backstage, the moments that you catch with the fellas and the ladies backstage, especially uh, the original core, core guys, that is real. That is not smoke. That will never go away. The relationship that Chris and I have, which, is, which okay, so Jackson and I, we have a special relationship within the group. So all of us are our group, and then we all have like our partners in the group. And my partner in the group has always been Jackson. And Jackson and I, we have not this, true. yes, it is. We have this older brother, younger brother relationship. The problem is Jackson thinks he's older, but I am the older one. And that, that dynamic that you see is real. And so it's always fun to me because I've never, Chris knows this and so does Tommy. I've never met a camera I didn't like. So you could feel me. It doesn't matter what is on. If the camera's on, I'm on. If the camera's off, I'm still on. And Jackson knows that. So when we are together, what's really fun about the film is what you're seeing is this journey of these guys who have built this relationship. So you see them in Edinburgh, and it was always fun for me to see it and talk about it with them, to see these guys and where we are now, older, you just see a, a more mature side of the immaturity of us that we have together. And that is the fun part, because people always wonder, well, what are they like now that they're in Hamilton? What are they like when they wrote In the Heights? What are they like now that they're directing TV or on TV? Those are the personas that we do because that's our profession but the souls that you see the people that you see those are the same guys and those are the things it's okay if people see them on television because if you saw us in the street that's what you'd see now whether you could catch us because we see a whole crowd of people coming that's a whole different story but because it's on film you get a chance to check it out see it it's still and it's there but that's one of the things I love about this group is that the spirit that you see are just some people that really just love being around each other it's just right now our schedules are too busy. So when Tommy called us back together, we couldn't wait to get back together and everything felt right in the place. We all know our place. We all know which insults are coming. We all know which jokes are coming. And we all know which, you know, in, in improv, you like to, you know, bring a joke back. We, we've brought jokes back from 15 years. <laughs> and when we, when we have certain jokes, you know, we'll say, we're like, that's true. no one in the room knows what it is. And we know because we've lived it. And so that's one of the things I love about this group is like the smoke is on stage, but you know, that, that heat that we create is always going to be there no matter how old we get. Yeah. I mean, I mean, to this, James has been in the group for 13 years and he's like the new guy. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like that with this, like that's <laughs> yeah, that, like, exactly. Kind of right, yeah. There are things that, there are things that Chris said in a rehearsal, a rehearsal that come back, you know, like, so that sort of callback nature of it is obviously, both baked into our personalities and this other thing. You know, something that Andrew said, you know, makes me think a lot about, you know, about this idea of what lasts. Um, you know, both, both Hamilton and, and this documentary are both works of subjectivity. There, there was a hand that created it. And so the awareness of that, we forget that in documentary, right? Like that it was made, it was not, this is not found footage. This is assembled footage, this is curated. Um, and, you know, I, I talk a lot about the, you know, the analogy between making theater and running a restaurant. Because with theater versus film or television, you have to make the meal every, every seating. And the only thing that changes is the expectation of the people coming in. I've never heard of this restaurant to, I heard the soup was good to the soup better be good because I waited in line for the soup. You know, so those are the things that change. But you know, what, what Andrew's saying, and, and and it's such a fascinating thing, right? This, this conversation, of, you know, with Chef's Table, I mean, of course it makes Andrew for so many reasons exactly the right person to tell this story. But here's the thing about freestyle that's, that is, is directly related to the experience of scripted theater and also different. One is, to your question, Brian, no one is playing a character in freestyle. They're a version of themselves, plus some percentage or less some percentage, right? But like, that's, they are, yes, they have names in there, right? It's like C-Jack or Lin-Man or J-Soul, but you are also seeing a kind of x-ray and the show asks that of them, especially in those moments of true, um, which are, and then everything sort of outside of this, you know, the structured songs or games. But the thing is that, that's resonant for me now is most people, when they go to a restaurant, what they talk about is what did, you know, what was happening in the world? Who did they go to the restaurant with? What did they talk about? Where were they in their life? And then they'll remember like two or three bites, 
They'll remember the quality of the rice pudding. They'll remember the feeling of something else. And that actually lasts forever. And so that's the thing that freestyle does create. And that's why people didn't want to leave our show. In the lobby of our show, more than any show I've ever done, audience doesn't, they don't want to go home. Stay. Because they know, they know that yeah. something is going to, you know, evaporate. But what they don't realize is something is going to stay. And I feel like that's what Andrew's docu documentary really captures is like, is the accumulation of all of the meals we've served, you know, and, and I, I just, you know, and I think that that, that's why it feels like a celebration. And, and I think that's the love that he put in and it's what exists on stage and off stage. And there's also the, um, now the, and this has come up through this question too, is like, is the uh, accessibility factor of like now, now, a much wider audience, you know, you know, can experience the same thing with Hamilton going on to Disney Plus is just the, you know, what would typically happen so briefly in the theater is like now anybody, you know, can, can watch it. And was that, was that a consideration when kind of going to distributors and um, was, was Hulu kind of early on the, the preferred uh, partner or, and was that kind of also of, of mind, of, you know, it's like, how accessible can we make this? Yes, and uh, Andrew and I knew uh, Belisa. Um, Chris knew Belisa worked at Participant Media when we made our television show Pivot. Where the, in the very end of it, Belisa had... Belisa made the show that I was trying to make in two thousand five. She made it in you know or some version of it. But what yeah, year 13, did you make 14. that? Yeah, thirteen fourteen. So I was um, I was seething with jealousy about Belisa uh, Alaban, but so Belisa is at at Hulu and is you know someone that we had a previous relationship with, which obviously again there's a comfort there. But look, the the, the less known story um, because of the thing that's on Disney Plus is this freestyle doc also wasn't supposed to come out for a long time, mm -hmm. and we had a conversation with our other producers, with John and Jenny and Jill and and, and Andrew and I and, and Lynn of course. And we said now let's do this now. And Hulu, nine months earlier than this thing was going to come out, 10 months, we haven't even set a date, said, okay, let's go. I mean, like, that's a very rare kind of partnership. And having experienced that twice in a very short amount of time, I know how rare that is. But it felt like now is an opportunity to let us celebrate what it feels like to be in a room with people when we can't be in a room with people. And um, you also talked about um, the, the, the kind of the things that have come up just from you know previous rehearsals and other performances, like so, is there like a a freestyle of Supreme file cabinet somewhere, or is it just in everybody's heads? Or like, James, it's right there. Is that it, James? Behind you? Yes, right there. Ah, <laughs> uh, the the, Fubba, the Fubba, No, it, I think there are certain things that um, because we've been when a group has been together for a certain amount of time, you kind of just know the timing of the people you're with. You know, uh, Chris and I have been singing together for 13 years, off and on. And there are moments where I can, he'll start singing and I just know where he's gonna go and I know, okay, I'm gonna go down here. Oh, I'm gonna go up. Oh, I see where Chris is gonna go. There's no file cabinet of what we've done. I mean, yes, there are tapes now of shows and people can go back to the archive and go, or for, directors, for directing purposes, Tommy can go back and go, oh, that was great. James, you are way too long on true. You took way too long, which is usually the note. James, you've gone way too long. Yeah. Bring it back down. Calm, calm, calm it down. Um, and so we have that for directorial purposes. But as far as us having like a file cabinet of what we've done or who we are, nah. Because literally, Tommy and Anthony love the fact that it is just improv. Just, just shoot you out of a cannon and go, sorry, if you fall, you fall, and we'll laugh about it later. Or if some shows will laugh about it on stage with you, with the audience, and that's even more great. <laughs> so, nah, whatever we do is just what we do. Thank God for the documentary so people have some form to see exactly what it takes to do what we do. There's, there are very few pleasures that I have as great as standing in the back of a theater <laughs> with Tommy watching a freestyle show. Because I think, you know, Tommy has obviously seen so many of them. Um, but I've, I have a few under my belt at this point as well. And it almost feels like we're wordlessly riffing off of each other because of our understanding of what's going on on stage. Like we could just sort of look at each other in the back of a theater and know that 
how is Anthony gonna get out of this weird rap that he has started? Or what are they gonna do with that word? Or I can't believe that's a suggestion they took. And then when you see what somebody does with it, when you know, when you see what UTK does with it, when you, when you see what Chris does with it, you sort of have this like, like it's just this sort of wordless um, communication that we have in the back of now a whole bunch of different theaters of different sizes that is a real special thing for me. And Chris, at one point, you, uh, you, you talk about the accessibility factor of Freestyle of Supreme and then also um, into your theater work. But you, you also, one of the quotes was, um, Tommy Kale can make sense out of chaos. And since we're living in a chaotic world right now, um, like, has there been any talk about what, you know, what freestyle of Supreme looks like in a virtual world, like if we're continuing, I know there's a lot of discussion, you know, in film and TV as well as in theater of like how we continue, where we go from here. Um, like, do you see a a Zoom of freestyle of Supreme? Does does it not work because of without that that live like energy happening? Or you know, like you can still get the chat function, all that kind of stuff. You know, like we were talking earlier, you know, Q and As themselves are also so different in, in this environment. So is there a place for for a virtual um, FLS? Well, Tommy had made the, the comment earlier that, you know, this was a time to celebrate being in a room together when no one can be in a room together. Uh, I think that that's, I think that might be, you know, the answer to that question, the, 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 the most, uh, uh, the most direct answer to that question. Um, in my mind, and this is how I have regarded all of the theater work I've done for over 20 years, which is, you know, when a group of people come together and, and, and touch and agree that they are going to, for whatever period of their, of their lives or of their day, they're going to sit in a room and they're going to uh, uh, give their rapt attention to the idea of a story, the idea of, 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 of be collectively absorbing and participating in the telling of, of, um, the, the, the description of a moment, right? Um, that only happens in very small uh, and very select places in, in, in all of mankind. Uh, the most, the nearest comparison that I have to that is church. When people come, there is a there is an, an openness that most people come to a theater with. Uh, there is a there is a need. There's a uh, there are cracks that need to be filled. There are there are conversations that need to be had. There are emotions that need to be found and expressed one, whether through you or through a surrogate on stage or by a, a fellow theater goer three seats down. The ability to have access to all of those different things can only happen in certain places, right? Um, freestyle, it, it, for, for la for, there are so many different metaphors you could use for how we do what we do and what the purpose of it is. But I think, you know, when you see, uh, when you see us on stage and we're, we're, we're in the midst of our show, it's very much like you get this, and the only other place that I've ever seen this is with the jazz ensemble that has been playing for a long time. Now we all know my favorite things and there's a thousand different ways that you can go with it, but there's a form and then there are various instrumentalists that are sitting around and they're all listening to one another. And they're all speaking uh, uh, through their instruments as a response to whatever stimulus it is, whatever is motivating them, right? They're, what, how they're feeling, what's happening out on the streets, all of these different things, because it's not scripted, what we have is an opportunity to just to listen in a much more intense way. And it, everyone is required to listen. Everyone, that's how you participate. You require, you're required to, uh, to engage. Um, that's a hard thing to pull off online. It's not impossible. We're engaged now in this conversation. But it's happening at the speed of life in which a conversation, you know, you, you, you ask us a question, we think, we consider, we answer. We're engaging in a very, very specific kind of way. The amount of speed and just sheer intuition um, and instinct that is required to do what we do collectively is, I, I don't know that there's a measure for it. I just know that I get as much feedback from the way that James is, is, is grooving to a beat and how it's affecting his, his gait or how this certain thought has his posture shifting or what that person in the 15th row who keeps yelling out, you know, uh, uh, 
whatever, you know, like Cheetos uh, for every question that, that Anthony would put out, right? It, all of those things are, 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 are influencing and, and affecting our thought processes and their ha processes and they're happening so quickly. Um, it's impossible to see a, a theater full of people on a, on a computer screen. It's impossible to see the own, your, own, your, your, your brothers and sisters that you share a stage with. It's impossible to react to different, not impossible, but it, it makes it more difficult, I think. In, to, or, you know, it might be hot in his house or sunny outside. Or, and all of those things matter. They all matter so much. We are, we are in such a heightened state of awareness. And I think that when you, when you think about a Zoom uh, um, scenario, what it does for me is it just kind of feels like it takes a 4D super, super, super uh, stimulating uh, and, and, and full of input kind of situation. And it, it breaks it down to, you know, a screen. You know what I mean? I, and I don't think the technology can hold up to it, but it, or can support it. Um, but you know, this is for this is for people to have real time experiences. Um, and I think that the idea of, of putting it in, into a technological space, Tommy, I apologize if, if this is not a you know if this goes against an idea that you're cooking up and you just haven't told us about yet. But um, <laughs> there it goes. We've lost yeah, it. I, I, you know, Tommy told me a long time ago, he's like, this isn't a rock concert. It's a theater show. We're here to feel things. And we want the audience to feel things. Um, and I've always, um, just, I've been very, very, very sacred about that, that, that idea. And uh, on that note, Chris, Chris is right. There is a, um, there is such a difference from be, what our group does when we are live. Yet, because we are Freestyle Love Supreme and... Tommy and Anthony and Shockwave feel like this group must go on no matter what's happening through a pandemic, rain, <laughs> volcano. I have been a part of many, since the pandemic has started, many Freestyle of Supreme shows, private shows and public shows and award shows on Zoom and different things. And I will tell you that it is hard as I don't know what to do, but somehow, we have done it, but you talk about the, 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 the amount it takes to listen when we're on stage. It is so much more <laughs> to listen when we're here because the, uh, Chris can tell you, the beats don't go together because of Zooms. So the Jelly layer. Donut, a a Andrew Jelly Donut Bancroft has figured out a way to make it so that we all, we all the, the amount of rehearsal we take for a live show, the amount of rehearsal we take for an electronic show, trying to get all our computers lined up so that the beat stays the same way, so that Kayla can beat the same way and we could all rap. The fact that with, when we are rapping live on stage, I don't have to look at Chris, I can feel Chris. I know if I, I can feel Chris go, oh, I want that. And I go, yeah, he's about to do that. On screen, I am looking directly at the box that my people are on to see what they're about. I can say, okay, Jelly's moving to the left. He's going to do something. We, right, okay, we're we, we doing it, right? <laughs> that is exact. So we have done freestyle on in, in this way, and it can be done. But I think that when it's done here, it is basically just wetting the appetite for people to get back into the theater to see what we really can do. This, this virtual form is just a demo, just to get you ready for the moment you can take off your mask, get into a real place, spend your money and see what this family can do. So yes, can we do it? Yes, but it just, is, it just gets you ready to see how we do it when we're all together. And it's a very interesting I don't know if the, thing. I don't know if this came across in the movie, but I will always probably, will most likely be the last person to say yes to anything that is not the show that we do. Yes, because you know, but you know what? But that's what makes. But listen, listen, listen. <laughs> that's that's I, just I, me. I, no, I I've had kids I was, longer. I'm tired. I'm just always I, tired. I'm saying I, I don't have time. I don't have time. I will say I don't have time for the for the new for the new shit. I don't have time. My brother, my my brother is my brother is the dad, and my brother also is Chris. Chris James, is the highlight. You don't James, see you don't. The fact that you guys are seeing Chris here right now is is a gift. You you see Chris on stage. <laughs> You see Chris on stage, and I'm just messing with you, cause, but you see, you, you, you go see Chris. You go see Chris in Hamilton. You go see Chris in Tommy, Did you talk to him? What time did you have a Did you have a conference? Did you speak to him? You didn't speak to him before this, right? You didn't? OK, that's, that's fine. He didn't, he didn't call me back. No, okay. man, no, hi. That's fine. But this is, this is how we are, but no, but yes. 
See, that's what I'm saying. You seeing the people Not watching this right now. Not people are watching, James. The people watching this right now are now can't wait to see There are no more people stage. watching this. Yes, they are. Participant leads. Like participant leads. Participant leads. Oh, participant leads. <laughs> I see one at the top of my screen. Thanks, James. Yes. It's just me. It's just me. That's, that's... The last one of these, no one asked you questions, and it, it went so much more smoothly. <laughs> It's so I didn't get that rule. I didn't get that. <laughs> Don't ask. No, it's you. not a rule. It's not a rule. It's just when it works out that way, it's really awesome. Just, have, <laughs> just this works. It's, hell. It, it's family. <laughs> God. And James, we we have um, we have a lot of a, much of our membership um, are aspiring artists, filmmakers, everything. And so you came in um, a little later to the group, but the the story yeah, was yeah. basically like your audition became a rehearsal. So like yeah. But like, what did you do? What What was your secret in the audition room? <laughs> um, I think not knowing what the heck I was walking into, pretty much. Uh, with with freestyle, it really isn't. A, you can't plan for this. You either. I, I hate to say this, but the people that are in our group either have it or they don't. They kind of walk in with it, and it's it's a thing. It literally is. Hate to you know use a Star Wars reference. You kind of just have the force. You either you know, and then you're once you get into the group. The Jedi Masters train you on what to do, and you keep going. But if you don't have the force in the beginning, it doesn't work. So when I walked into that uh, audition, Jackson had already, you know, kind of prepared me of what was happening. You know, literally, I was sleeping on his Aged couch. The way <laughs> laid true. the Mike, groundwork. Chris Hi, Jackson is Mike three. Hi, Mike three. Up. Yes, he did, and I and I delivered because I Chris also, you know, threatens people. You know, he's like, if you're not good, you know, things will happen. So I went in there, you know, oh, scared but good. That's what I said. That's what he said. And I was good. And uh, what's the great, the great part was, uh, matter of fact, I was great. That's a whole different point. Um, but we're sitting wow. there and the other people who auditioned, Tommy sent out of the room and then Tommy closed the door and he just started talking to us. And I looked over at UTK and Chris and I was like, am I in the group? And Chris was like, shh, you're in the group, be quiet. And <laughs> Tommy just started talking okay. about what was happening. That's kind of what happened. And that's kind of what happened in the, the first, this, I, Tommy, correct me if I'm wrong, but the first formal auditions that we really had for the group was going to Broadway, right? Yeah, and I mean, outside of UTK, I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, UTK and I yeah, auditioned. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, then and, then, and even, and even in that, that, that way, way, and even in that way, Tommy sat back and let Chris and I just literally play with the performers coming in. So the performers would come in, we'd have a beatboxer, and Chris and I, Tommy would say, yo, take them through this. And Chris and I would just go. And those who vibed, vibed. And those who didn't, you know, went on to, you know, have other great moments. But like Anissa Folds walks in, and the moment she starts working, Chris and I just kind of look at each other, and we just knew. We were like, yep, yep, there it is. Hey, for this group, for this group, finally. Just have to, yeah, right. <laughs> It's exactly like, what it was. Yes. Like. We're like, oh, somebody gets it. She was, and you just yeah, she was kind of just get it. It's a very, I've never ever gone through an audition process like this. I've never ever been with a group like this. It's just, it's like like minds that just happen to come together. And Tommy's there to go, okay, this is the group, cool. And though every couple of years we have new folks who, you know, do it well and they end up being with us. It's uh, incredible, uh, and uh, we uh, not to go back, but we, we didn't kind of get, go full circle because we didn't get the producers and directors' thoughts on kind of virtual production and what that looks like. Um, Andrew, obviously, you, you know you you've worked across film, TV, theater. Um, Tommy, you too. So what what do you see? Have, are you kind of like let's wait, let's you know get back into the live space or what are your thoughts on kind of making things happen in this virtual world in a new way, especially since we're kind of looking at, you know, how many more months of this? Yeah, I think people are connecting creatively in new ways. That is actually pretty exciting. Out of necessity comes creativity. And, you know, we had to finish this movie remotely. Like when I say finishing, like literally the, the final cut and then color correcting and audio mixing and everything. And you can't do that. How could you mix a movie, you know, not in the room with the mixer, but you, we figured it out. And I, I, I've, I've listened to it a few times and I think it sounds pretty good. And so, you know, there, there's a lot of innovation and create creative solutions that have come out of that. And for me personally, 
visual aesthetic and intimate connection with subjects is such an important part of of what I've been doing and what we've been doing on the TV side and, and film side that I, I'm I'm trying to hold on to that and trying to figure out when we can do some version of that. I love watching, I mean, I watched that Sondheim um, special on YouTube. I've watched a lot of things that um, otherwise wouldn't have existed except for, you know, Zoom environments. And so I can, and even just the progress that's been made with that stuff from, you know, March 15th to July 15th, like the stuff that, that the Hamilton group did for uh, John Krasinski's uh, uh, Some Good News was like, oh, we could do that on Zoom? Well, that's pretty interesting. And then Jimmy Fallon did a thing um, around the time when Hamilton was coming out on Disney Plus, and it was like, oh, we could do that? Like, that's that's pretty dynamic and new and, and, and amazing. And so I'm a fan of a lot of that stuff. But for me personally, I'm just trying to hold on to the fact that we'll get to do some version of what we actually do pretty soon. And, and I'm excited about that. And what about you, Jeremy? Me? Um, I am open to all possibilities. I, the theater has been around for thousands of years. And theater will be back. We just don't know when. And when it comes back, we want to be there with the group that you see in this film. There's a lot more members that you don't. We want to go on tour. We want to come back to New York and have, have that be part of the, the future of, of Free Style of Supreme as it has been so much of the past. And, you know, I've had a couple of experiences with this group of doing a scripted version of a show. Uh, this, this little television show we made, which is on Amazon right now, we made it for for pivot like at that moment it was like oh let's let's see if we can make improv that doesn't flatten out when you put it on the screen and like at each time we've done we've done the best that we could and and i think that i've had the most fun not trying to make something into what it's not so free soul of supreme was designed to be experienced live in the theater and so that version will always exist. And the question of how we can find other access points is something that I'll forever be open to. And frankly, a lot of that creativity comes from the group. You know, it'll be someone saying, hey, we can do this, we can do this, we can do this. And my job is to maybe be at 5,000 feet a little, a little further back and see if I can help that cohere or coalesce into an idea. And we just try things along the way. So um, we'll keep making stuff and we'll just, we'll just have to see where the container is. I agree with Tommy. Chris. I, I, I don't want, do I don't want to play favorites, role. but I really like Chris. <laughs> <laughs> and not to, uh, oh, not to make the, the rest of the Q&A all about the pandemic, but we do have a, oh. an audience question uh, from Laura. Uh, how has the pandemic affected you creatively? And do you have any tips for artists and creators who are struggling to figure out their place in a world that's changing so quickly? For this is lightning round. Lightning round. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think the thing about it is, um, never mind. You, you have a, you have a, you have a whole movie, you have a whole movie, uh, all, all the equipment in your hand. It's, it's right here. I mean, we've been, you know, you can do anything. I mean, a blank page can start so many things. I mean, just write down your thoughts. It's amazing what'll come out once you finally get them all down. You know, you're stuck at home and you're bothered and everything is in your head. Get it out, type it out, write it out, draw it out, do something. It's amazing what you'll, what you, you'll, you'll probably surprise yourself when you see something come out. Have conversations. I mean, just late night crazy conversations with Chris will, will come up. Will, things will come out. He'll talk to me and I'll go, oh, he said this thing. I, oh, that's really fun. Oh, I, same thing. He'll go, oh, that, that, that's cool. You know, Tommy will call us and go, yo, that's I got true. this idea. And usually when he says I got this idea, that means we're doing something. So, um, you know, you can be creative in any, any way. Don't let the the, the depression and the downtroddenness of the news and the things that are happening in the world and the mask wearing and all that kind of stuff get you to the point where you feel like you can't create. Create. Hell, make a puppet out of a mask and you could have a whole new show. By 2021, it'll be the mask puppet show and everybody be watching it. So, I mean, you know, come up with anything. It's amazing. And also people are so starved for content. You can come up with anything. It's okay. And also everything's already been done before. All you have to do is just repackage it. And I know that sounds crazy, but re, 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 reinvent the wheel. 
the wheel has been made. Yo, spruce it up. Do something cool. You can always be creative. Do they not let it get you they down. They spinning. They spinning. Right. <laughs> Because that's what's going to get you out of the depression. Yo, that's what's going to get you out of the depression, <clears throat> creating things. I agree with everything that James said. <laughs> See, I like Chris. I, li I like Chris a lot. Chris is my favorite. Now, Tommy did say lightning round, right? Which I don't know. I just said it. What? Go ahead, Chris. Lightning round. No, yeah. seriously. That's, I was going to say that, just probably shorter. But yeah. I, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's repackaged again, so. Everything's oh, repackaged yeah. again. <laughs> I hope there's at least one I person think, watching this. Because I think this there's going to be oh, something. There are. Don't you all have the sense that there's going to be such great art that has been created during all of these times? Yes. Like <laughs> songs that will be written. I had a friend send me a song the other night that they wrote that brought me to tears, you know. I mean, what? people people are writing songs. People are making music. People are writing books. People are writing plays. And that sounds really, really exciting. What else do they have to do? You know? Facts. Think, think of new insults for your friends. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, something like that. <laughs> what about you, Tommy? Any advice on kind of getting past the creativity roadblock? No, I, I, my, my sense with making anything is, you know, some people work, um, some people work best when they uh, they created a sense of harmony. Some people need a kind of unsettled uh, energy to to make things, and there's there's no one way to do it. I just I know that at the beginning of this thing, we were all trying to find equilibrium, and then uh, you know as that's you know as that starts to um, find its you know find its course, the world says, and what about this, and what about this, and what about this, and so I think it's just about finding your balance, you know, you know how the work balances you. And it's the, the, you know, the thing about this show that I'm always reminded of is just keep going. It's just it, keep going and grab the people around you that make you feel strong when you're weak, grab the people around you that do the things that you don't know how to do and link arms. I think that that's, you know, the, this idea of how we find togetherness in a, in a moment of dis disbursement, you know, I think has, you know, been, uh, one of the real challenges, but I, I feel like we're all, we're getting better at that every day too. And I think that that togetherness, that um, everybody's strengths and weaknesses coming together is, is just shown so beautifully in, in this, this group and this documentary um, of that. Like, Which weaknesses? I'm sorry. Can we go into the second? Which weaknesses are you talking about? <laughs> James, is a comment? I, I mean, James, I, 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 I you know, appreciate even the, like kind of delving into, um, you know, um, uh, the sobriety factor and you know dealing with fame and success and what what that what that does to people and, and, and uh, even talking about like the friendships kind of dissipating and coming back together again and what that looks like you know it really captures life and and what you know what people actually go through um, and this is a credit to, to Andrew um, you know th there's a playwright named Donald Margulies and really early in my career when I worked at the drama bookshop in that little theater in 2001 he 2002 probably right after I got there he gave a talk and he said through specificity you can transcend and reach in a universal way and I think that this this documentary captures this very specific group of people doing this very specific thing and so through that there's a portal and that portal takes you to what it means to be a member of a family when the dynamics change we all know how we feel when we're 50 miles from home and 25 miles from home and one mile from home. And then you walk in the back door and you're like, oh, it's also this, this, this thing that I, that I've been dealing with my whole life. This, the, what it means to uh, play a role within a dynamic and how that evolves. And, and Andrew captured this very odd <laughs> collection that we found over time um, that had this, uh, this, this thing that wasn't always invited into our other work. And the show tried to create a, place for it to be accessed um, and that's really difficult to do because there's look there's so much of all of our stories that, that happen outside the 83 minutes of this um, so to distill it is a you know it's, it's quite a feat and sure. and I, I think that's that's something that he that he captured because he wanted to try to find humanity in all those moments because everything you're talking about is, is about humanness yeah I agree with what Tommy said I don't play favorites but I like I like him a lot <laughs> 
<laughs> and, um, and, and same thing in terms of like the, um, the emotional beats of the film. I like there's, and there's, there's a couple that, that just kind of um, majorly resonated. It won the, uh, you bring up the drama bookshop and just kind of having like that, um, that uh, kind of celebration of it, you know, something that we almost lost and, you know, is, is, is so near and dear um, to the, the theater community's hearts. Um, but also the, you know, this is a doc that you kind of go into where you think, you know, you're gonna, it's, it's just a lot of laughs because it's improv, but then you really like get to the heart of it. And even having like the moment at the end with the in memoriam for uh, the Nancy Hillman, I've been working on it for months bit, like, just like, I, I was like, okay, I'm good. I'm set. And then like to have like another kind of moment where I was like, now I'm crying again. <laughs> like, bravo for, for really like coming through and in, in, in a very like natural, you know, beautiful way. It, it, it was such a, such a beautiful touch. Thank you. I think, I think that was part of what we were talking about earlier of like not wanting to leave. Like, why did we put that UTK rap in the credits? What, like, the number of people who have mentioned that Nancy Hillman moment to me, and then the sort of epilogue comments that we make afterwards. Um, we live in a world now where as soon as the movie's over, it's a five second count until the next thing starts automatically on your, on your streaming service. And so the fact that I think we knew like pe people aren't going to want to leave this five seconds after <laughs> it's over. And so that rap, which is from that pivot show um, that, that uh, Tommy was talking about earlier, which really, you know, in like a sort of Shakespearean way, but maybe it's the reciprocal of a Shakespeare play. Like it tells you the entire movie in two minutes, sort of during the credits. It's like, why did I watch this whole movie? I could have, I could have just, could have just watched this thing. But then that's over. And by the way, that Nancy Hillman moment is after that. And then the stuff about, you know, Rishi and the Vitamix is after that. And the drama bookstop, book, bookshop epilogue is after that. Like, it's proof that people don't want to leave even this movie, which is, you know, just a, just a taste of what a Freestyle of Supreme show is like. That made you so invested in those characters that they even, as you mentioned, like the characters on film are, you know, all like, there's something so much more in their lives outside of, you know, these 83 minutes, like same thing, like the audience is so such an integral part of that, that even she deserved that, that moment. Um, it's yeah. Really oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, no, go ahead. I just, you know, one of the reasons why I wanted us to make this movie is because it's a miracle that we're all still here. 14 years later, we're all still, like, we're all still here. And the Nancy Hillman thing is so heartbreaking because it's a reminder, it's like, it just, it goes too fast. And look how happy she was on that stage. Look how happy Anthony made her feel. She was so full of joy. And Nancy Hillman spent her life in the theater. Nancy Hillman was out in the Pacific Northwest making theater for children. And, and like, and so much of what this show does is it says that, that thing that you did today that you think was just a thing that you did, it's magic. You are magic, your story. You think it's just a story? No, right now we're gonna celebrate that. And, and so then we disperse, we come together, this group of people who will never be together again. They come together and they sit in the dark and they watch the story and then they go out. And the only thing that they might have in common after that is I was there the night when this happened, when Nancy Hillman got on stage. And Lynn says it in that moment in the dock, you know, like, you just want to relive it. And we've had the great good fortune, and I'm so humbled by that, that we've had these experiences, uh, you know, to, to come together and, and then to go back out, that sort of accordion nature of, of the world. And, and I think that in this, you know, documentary about a hip hop improv group, you know, that's what Andrew also did. Like, that's, that's the true moment of this doc. I mean, where are we going after that? This thing's over. Come on. <laughs> well, we are, we are, we are at at a time. Thank and I. Anything you, you want to add, James? Know. You good? Anything you want to <laughs> add? <laughs> uh, yes, there are reruns <laughs> of uh, Bull on CBS starring Chris Jackson. He's great. Really, really good. Really, really good. Maybe is there anything you want to about Chris Jackson um, as his hype man? 
Yo, man, Chris, Chris is a great dad. He's a great wife. He's a great husband. He's a great person. The funny thing is, this don't forget friend. Was, don't forget friend. This, this, don't this forget documentary friend. was actually supposed to be about Chris, and Lynn stepped in and was like, "Yo, I wrote Hamilton. Let's bring it back. Let's bring it back." And so Tommy was like, "He's right. We probably should do that." More Chris well, Jackson. Thanks for coming, everybody. <laughs> and just just before we head out, though, I would I would just love to hear um, what. If, if anything, you can tell us, um, you know, what are you working on right now? Um, and, you know, what's, what's kind of next for each of you? Uh, I'm going to put some music out soon. Good Lord willing. And, um, and I've got uh, some things in development for television that I'm, that I'm writing and collaborating on. Yeah. James. Me. Oh, sorry. I was listening to Chris waiting for the rest of his resume. Um, Brief. Yeah, I've got a few cartoons coming out uh, in this year, next year, and also a new um, television thing in, in the works that has uh, just been popping up. So I'm very proud of that. And a couple stories, hopefully, with Marvel. I, I write comics too. So, got a couple of things happening. Tommy, what do you got going on? Anything? What, I'm just waiting for you to call. <laughs> My number's the same, Andrew. Yeah. Yeah. Ain't nothing changed. Like that much, right? <laughs> nothing changed. You, you tell us more about pictures. You can happen? just Google Tommy Kale and see all that is ahead for uh, the world of entertainment. <laughs> um, yeah, we look, we because what we do in this unscripted realm is is different than the rest of the entertainment business, we've been we've had some shows in the can that We've edited and delivered, and so we released a series called Home Game on Netflix that we're very proud of. That was two weeks ago. We released uh, a new season of Street Food on Netflix two days ago that we're very excited about, and we have some more things coming out soon. And so we're still, you know, telling our stories and and trying to do our work and and some exciting things on the horizon as well. I'm not going to be releasing music. Um, anytime soon. Andrew, come on. You know you got a hot 16. <laughs> yeah, I got Dude, it. Got it's on the it's, it's he on might the be in Siddler. That's all I'm going to say. He might tape. be in Siddler. <laughs> I mean, you've dropped a chorus line reference in here. Like, there, there has to be something kind of... <laughs> it is a thrill. I, mean, I, I take it back. I need two... We need two black people in Fiddler. <laughs> Me and James. Noted. Noted. I will, yeah. I will say I'm looking out for you again. Because Thank Brian, you. I see I see your mug and, and, and it's meaningful to me. Like I was a theater kid. I was in the high school plays. I was trying to be this thing that, you know, didn't quite pan out for me the way it's panned out for the other three gentlemen on this Zoom. But this project and the Heights project, like it's I'm so grateful the time that I've gotten to spend doing what I do, which is with a camera in hand or with um, Brian Fisher having a camera in his fan, hand next to me, but um, to do that in, in theaters around these people who are at the very, very top of the theater world in real time. Every time I walk across a theater stage, as I'm going from one side to the other to grab a camera, grab a microphone, make sure James is ready for the thing that we're doing, I always have a moment of pause as I look out and realize like, I'm on a, I'm on a stage. I'm, I'm, you know, Mr. Kennedy would be very proud of me right now. He's still alive. I don't know why I talk about him when he's not there, but, but Mr. Kennedy would be very proud. I, I made it. I'm on a stage. I'm, I'm doing something different than singing and dancing, but, but I'm there and it's, it's very special to me. It is. There's a very solemn moment. I mean, Chris, you mentioned it in the, the doc that the theater is, it's a sacred space and there's, there's something very, there's that moment that just like hits your heart. Yeah. It's the, you know, it's the, it's the essence of why we, you know, one, what, how we get to communicate with one another. Um, the idea that, that, that you could be expressing an emotion as a character that gives someone access who has never, who hasn't cried in 15 years or who hasn't laughed because they have a situation that they're living through, you know, that, they, that no one is aware of, but theater gives people that, that access and it is sacred. It is, it is a trusted position and an honorable position to, to stand on stage and, be a, and hopefully be a conduit for someone to give someone a, a, a access that they normally wouldn't have.
uh, and the best, the best stories are the ones of, you know, the, the theater goer who's, you know, come to your show for the, their first experience in theater. And they have all, they're flooded with all of these sensory, uh, um, all the sensory input and all of this, you know, I'm sitting around other people and I'm crying, but I don't feel self, uh, uh, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm not self-aware at all. I'm not self-conscious. I'm just in this moment because you're looking around and everybody around you is having the same experience or a similar experience, right? You walk out the door different than the way you walked in. And if we do our jobs right, that's the, all that we could ever ask, ask for is to be a part of that. Um, and like I said earlier, it just doesn't exist that very few places in the world exist uh, like that. And uh, that's why it's just the most wonderful, hard, uh, uh, exasperating, thrilling thing that as an artist, uh, I can even conceive. And why it's so worth waiting for and fighting for, you know, sure. right now. Absolutely. And yeah. Tommy, what, what, I mean, like, what are you working on? <laughs> My what? next job. My, ne my next What's job. I'm working on. Like, I'm working on everybody here is next job. My next Hitler. job. <laughs> um, uh, like just doing a lot of like a lot of thinking and a lot of uh, dreaming. I'm I'm in early early phases for this Fiddler movie that I'm uh, planning on making and a, a couple of little things here and there. But honestly, just uh, it's really nice to have made something, and we don't have to do it twice on Wednesday and two times on Saturday, like this doc is out there and I'm just, I'm, I'm just happy it gets to just spread and spread. Well, you all are incredibly busy and thank you so much for joining us today and, and taking your time and, and sharing this, this documentary with the world because it's, 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 it's a really beautiful piece that um, if our audience hasn't checked it out yet, please do on Hulu. Um, you'll laugh, you'll cry, it's better than cats. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us guys. Have a great evening for most of you. We'll talk soon. Thank you, Thank you for having us. Thank you so much, everybody.